So in just over 24 hours from now, a new Dokkan Festival Bardock is going to be dropping on the global side of the game. So in this video, we are going to be breaking down everything that you guys need to know about this release from the uh, banner to the unit details, the side unit, their animations, and all that good stuff to hopefully help you guys decide whether or not you want to spend your hard-earned Dragonstones to try and summon him. So with that said, let's jump right into it and the first thing we're gonna do before we talk about anything else is uh, watch his animations so let me just quickly pause my music here and enjoy guys Okay, so there you have it. Those are the animations for the side unit Tora slash, you know, Team Bardock, as well as the Bardock himself. Now, the um, Tora animations, honestly, they're fine. You know, nothing special. But Bardock, honestly, has some of my favorite animations in the entire game. It's just... I wouldn't say it's the most hype, right? But it just makes you feel things you know like dragon ball in general i feel like is not a series or a franchise that has a lot of like really emotional or touching moments like they're in there right there's definitely some like very emotional scenes but for the most part it's a lot of action it's a lot of like just cool transformations on that stuff but bardock's story has always been one of the most like just one of the saddest stories in the franchise right so um yeah these animations definitely bring all the feels and at least for me personally the animations alone are gonna make this a very difficult banner to skip but on top of that Bardock himself is actually really good so let's uh, move on from here let's get into the banner and the unit details starting with the banner first we have the JP banner which should be exactly the same as the global banner like there might be maybe like one substitute, but I kind of doubt it because I don't think any of these units have been recently featured on Global, right? So uh, let's scroll down a little bit. We have seven SSRs in total. Of course, the two new SSRs, the Bardock and the Tora, along with the Int Majin Vegeta, STR Super Vegeta, Int Legendary Super Saiyan Broly, uh, AGL Bardock, and then the Tech uh, First Form Frieza or Transforming Frieza. So as a whole, I would say that this banner is actually one of the better regular like Dokkan festival banners we've seen on Global recently. Um, not to say it's amazing, not to say that it's like great value by any means, but I would say, you know, rating wise, it's like a 7 out of 10, you know, maybe like a 7.5 if we want to be generous. And uh, yeah, it's not too bad. Like some people make it out to be just an awful banner. I don't know if it's because, you know, they just saw the uh, JP 8th anniversary banners, but you can't really compare regular Dokkan festival banners to, you know, anniversary banners. It's a different standard, right? So, yeah, for a normal Dokkan festival banner, I think this is not terrible. It's actually not bad. Um, outside of the, you know, new units, the Int Maja Medita can still be a very good defender. His offensive capabilities, I think, are a bit lacking. Like, he doesn't hit as hard as you might 
want him to, but he can still be a very reliable tank. And then uh, STR, Super Vegeta, has definitely fallen off uh, in recent months or years. Um, I would say that his offensive abilities are still pretty good. He can still do some pretty good damage, especially with the guaranteed crits, but it's his defense that's very lacking, and uh, he's not very reliable in that sense. He does still have a good leader skill though, uh, you know, for pure Saiyans, I would say if you don't have some of the other pure Saiyans leaders in the game, he is still a good option for a pure Saiyans lead. And then we have uh, Int Broly, who a uh, good stacker, can launch multiple supers, is very useful in certain events. Um, he might be the best unit on the banner outside of the Bardock, possibly, I'm not 100% sure about that, but he's still pretty good, he's still pretty good. Uh, AGL Bardock is, um, I think, the most in need of an Extreme Z Awakening on the banner. He, uh, I think, will probably get one for Saiyan Day. And uh, speaking of Saiyan Day, that's actually in about two and a half weeks. So we're getting a new unit for that for both Global and JP. Something to keep in mind. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. But yeah, I think this guy is most likely getting an Extreme Z Awakening, but maybe not. He needs one, though. He's not that impressive right now and uh tech frieza tech frieza is pretty good he's pretty good i still really use him or i really like him i still use him quite a bit on uh you know like wicked bloodline or um basically any of like the cooler slash frieza teams so i mean i don't think he's you know really aged out by any means uh still does good damage can stack defense uh not amazing defense but pretty good defense so uh, yeah, as a whole, like I said, this banner is not terrible. It's like a 7 out of 10, you know, uh, which means that there's some value here. There's some value here. It's not, like, gonna be anywhere close to a Dual Dokkan Fest or Anniversary banner, but not too bad. So, that's the banner. Now let's move on to the main man himself, the Tech Dokkan Festival exclusive Bardock. Uh, starting with the leader skill, Goku's family or storied figures, category key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 170%, plus an additional HP attack and defense plus 30% for characters in the pure Saiyans category. And then super attack greatly raises attack and defense for one turn, it causes immense damage, and passive is uh, activates the entrance animation once only, and randomly changes key spheres of a certain type to rainbow key spheres, attack plus 70% and foresees enemy super attacks for 5 turns from start of turn when there is an ally whose name includes Goku, Captain Ginyu, Junior, etc. excluded on the team or when there is an enemy whose name includes Frieza, Frieza Soldier excluded at start of character's attacking turn. And then key plus 2, attack and defense plus 150% plus an additional Attack and defense plus 40% with each super attack performed up to 120%. Attacks effective against all types with one or more rainbow key spheres obtained plus an additional. Attack and defense plus 50% with two or more rainbow key spheres obtained. And finally, performs a critical hit with three or more rainbow key spheres obtained. So, as you can see, he is a little bit reliant on getting rainbow key spheres to unleash his full potential. But since he is a rainbow orb changer himself, it's not really a huge issue. And then we have all these boosts throughout his passive, which can add up very quickly. So here are some calculations for you guys. Uh, his additional boost with each super attack performed is calculated separately for a total boost of attack and defense plus 450% or attack plus 604% for five turns from start of turn, starting from the turn in which the character performs the third super attack in battle, plus an additional attack and defense of up to plus 560% or attack plus 714% for five turns from start of turn with two or more rainbow key spheres obtained. So those are some massive, massive boosts. And when you couple that with his uh, attacks effective against all with one rainbow key sphere or the guaranteed crits, with three Rainbow Key Spheres, he's hitting very, very hard. And of course, you're also giving him as many additionals in his hidden potential as possible, so he will be getting those additional supers every so often. 
So yeah, great damage. Uh, defensively, he is also getting a lot of defense. Um, he's also greatly raising attack and defense, at least for one turn on his super attack. You can raise it twice if you get the additional super. So uh, yeah, just an all around very good unit. Great damage, uh, very good defense. Um, not much bad to say about this Bardock, honestly. He's just very, very good. And uh, he also has an active skill, which you guys saw in the animations. Uh, Final Spirit Cannon causes ultimate damage, and within the turn activated, all attacks become critical hits. And the condition is can be activated when there are another three or more Team Bardock category allies on the team, starting from the third turn from the start of battle, or when HP is 50% or less, starting from the uh, fifth turn from the start of battle, once only. So. If you're running a Team Bardock team, or uh, you don't even need a full Team Bardock team, actually, just three or more Team Bardock units on the team, then you can just use it on the third turn, which is awesome. Um, if you don't have the Team Bardock units, though, then you will have to wait a little bit longer and also be under 50% HP, which is obviously not as good, but still not terrible, I would say. Uh, links are Saiyan Warrior Race, Saiyan Lineage, Family Ties, Team Bardock, Saiyan Pride. Prepare for battle and fierce battle, and categories are low class warrior, pure saints, Goku's family, team Bardock, all out struggle, space traveling warriors, connected hope, storied figures, entrusted will, and bond of parent and child. So that is the tech Bardock, just uh, an awesome unit, honestly. A really awesome unit. Okay, so next up we have the uh, Int Tora. Leader skill is storied figures, key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 130%. Super attack raises attack for one turn, causes supreme damage, and raises super class allies attack by 30% for one turn. Passive is key plus 2, attack and defense plus 150%, plus an additional attack and defense plus 50% when performing a super attack, plus an additional attack and defense plus 20% per storied figures category ally on the team up to 100%. Chance of performing a critical hit and chance of evading enemy's attack, including super attacks, plus 10%, and reduces damage received by 10% per Team Bardock category ally attacking in the same turn. Uh, storied figures, category allies keep plus 3, attack and defense plus 30%, and then all allies attack and defense plus 30% when there is an ally whose name includes Bardock attacking in the same turn. So. If you remember the uh, side units that came with the AGL Captain Ginyu, then uh, this will look very familiar because they're very similar units in a lot of ways. Uh, and that means that this Tora is also pretty amazing, you know, for a non Dokkan Fest side unit. But of course, there are restrictions on him, right? He is definitely going to be uh, a little bit limited in the teams that he's most effective on, like having more storied figures. Or, you know, being able to support a team with Bardock. I mean, there's not really a reason to run him on a team without Bardock. So there's that. But yeah, um, on a story figures or team Bardock team with Bardock, uh, he's going to be great. You know, he's going to do some great things for you. So that's the passive. Uh, links are team Bardock, Saiyan Warrior Race, Saiyan Lineage, Saiyan, uh, wait, hold on, Saiyan Pride, Saiyan Lineage, Cold Judgment, Prepare for battle and fierce battle, and categories are low class warrior, pure saints, team bardock, space traveling warriors, and storied figures. That is the Tora. Um, as I said, you know, he's a great non Dokkan Fest unit, he's a great banner unit. And uh, if you can pick him up along with the bardock, then you're pretty set for the team bardock team, which is getting a lot better these days. Um, yeah, those are the new units. That is the banner and uh, those were the animations so at this point i hope that you guys have enough information to decide for yourselves if you would want to spend the stones to summon for this new unit but if you want my recommendation um i feel that this release is actually pretty good it's pretty good the banner is like a 7 out of 10 like i said which is actually slightly above average at least based on my rating skill. And uh, the animations are top tier, top tier animations for the Bardock at least. Um, Bardock is amazing, Tora is very good. So all in all, we got a pretty good package here, right? We got a pretty uh, enticing package for this Bardock release. Now, a 
couple of things to keep in mind is that uh, we are only about two weeks away from Saiyan Day, like two and a half weeks. It's on the 18th of March, so uh, that unit that we get for Saiyan Day is probably going to be amazing. It's uh, most likely going to have the new standby mechanic, which we saw from the 8th anniversary LRs. So if you guys want to experience that uh, on global and also just, you know, use this like really awesome new Saiyan Day unit, then that's something you definitely have to keep in mind. And even though the 8th anniversary is still a while away, it's still about four and a half months away, um, it's not a bad idea to start saving for that uh, dual Dokkan vest. Actually, you know, two LRs for both part one and part two right now, right? So, um, yeah, I would say if you want to spend stones on the Bardock banner, not a terrible idea. You shouldn't feel bad about it. I just wouldn't spend too many stones, uh, maybe a couple multis, test your luck, or you know, spend like like a third of your stones, half your stones. Essentially, don't spend all your stones is what I'm trying to say, right? There's some value here. It's not amazing value, but there is some value. Bardock is a great unit to have, so is Tora. Um, so it really depends on how bad you want this Bardock, right? But if you want to summon, like I said, you can go ahead and summon without feeling terrible about it. And uh, hopefully it works out, right? Because if you spend the stones, you don't get them, which can happen. Um, it always sucks. So best of luck to you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this video helped you in some way in uh, you know making that decision. And uh, as always, if you liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. Sub to the channel if you're new. Hit that notification bell so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And until next time, have an awesome, awesome day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media. Signing out.